what we learned yesterday. Um, I'm just looking to see what... Um, I think we did two paragraphs. Well, we talked about uh, being sent forth as lambs among uh, lambs amongst wolves, and that's ten thirteen, Luke ten thirteen. Um, and we know man's inventions oft often counterwork God's plans. So um, we talked about that, I think, as well. I think this is where we got to. I think we just did these two paragraphs. If anyone else has got any thoughts. The next paragraph is they will deliver you up. That's right. That's, that's, that's the next paragraph to be read. And I can't remember anything else that we... we it was, there was a lot of discussion, but I can't remember exactly everything that was said. And yeah, this is where we got to. All right. Mr. Matron, do you want oh, to take okay. money? Yes, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Back and they will deliver and then and we will continue, continue from there. there. All right, okay. Oh, thank you, sis. No problem. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your support. Um, so we will start to read from that paragraph, um, which begins by, they will deliver um, you up to councils. Uh, shall we just invite the Holy Spirit as we put our uh, minds together for the reading to our dear Heavenly Father this morning? Lord, we just want to just come before you once again. On our own, indeed, we can do this, but we invite the Holy Spirit, whom you said he will be among us to guide us into all truths. Oh, yes, indeed. We desire the truth this morning as we combine our Binds our hearts together. Please, Jesus, awake us up. Remove us from the slumber. Yes, you gave us the rest to rest. We have rested. So, Lord, begin this reading together with us and through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, yes. Is there anyone who wants to um, take us through the paragraph there i think he um we'll read the the first paragraph i'm not sure how long that one is i'm looking at my book it doesn't show the paragraphs but we'll be guided by this on the screen so anyone to take the first paragraph that one which says they will deliver you up to councils anyone please thank you i'll take it they will deliver you up to councils yea and before governors and kings you shall be brought before for my sake, for a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Matthew 10, 17 and 18. Persecution will spread the light. The servants of Christ will be brought before the great men of the world. But for this might never have heard for this might never have heard the gospel. The truth has been mis misrepresented to these men. They have listened to false charges concerning the faith of Christ's disciples. Often their only means of learning its real character is the testimony of those who are brought to trial for their faith. Under examination, these are requested to answer and their judges will listen to the testimonies born. God's grace will be dispensed to his servants to meet the emergency. It shall be given you, says Jesus, in the same hour what you shall speak, for it is not ye that speak, but, but the Lord of your father but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you as the spirit of god illuminates the minds of his servants the truth will be presented in its divine power and preciousness 
Those who reject the truth will stand to accuse and oppress the disciples. But under loss and suffering, even unto death, the Lord's children are to be are to reveal the meekness of their divine example. Thus it will be seen the thus will be seen the contrast between Satan's agents and the representatives of Christ. The Saviour will be lifted up before the rulers and people. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister. Uh, is it Arlene or Sister Linda to read so very well? Um, you know, when she was reading, this um, reminded me of the past session that was led by our dear sister Dorothy, the, the, the prayer session. Um, we prayed on the, you know, the Holy Spirit. When I, uh, I was looking at uh, everything that is written here, this is kind of like an exciting time. I, I don't know about you, what you think. An exciting time that shall be here uh, for the children of God. You know, this will have reached at a climax. Now, there's a reason why God wants us to have a very close relationship with the Holy Spirit. Do you see what is going to happen here? Without the Holy Spirit, you know, things will be very difficult and challenging to any believer. We will not be able to remember, you know, the words that we ought to speak when we're dragged to the courts, you're dragged here and people are accusing you here and there. And you know how the devil can become for, so forceful and making noise that he, all what you remember can fly away. But when we are with the Holy Spirit, we will be able to stand before the courts as it is being said. Thank you so much. I can see a hint. Yes, uh, uh, Tackley Twins. Yes, good morning, everyone. It's the part what says, um, often their only means of learning its real character is the testimony of those who are brought to trial for their faith. Because we know that there'll be judges there and there might even be a jury. And these people won't know the gospel and they won't know the truth until they hear, it, hear the testimony of those who have been brought to trial. And, uh, you know, we're told uh, that we don't have to worry what we're to say because, we, we know, what we've studied, what we've learned, it will be brought to our mind, uh, remembrance when we need to speak these words. And this will, be, this will be the means of converting some of those in the courts because they won't have heard the truth. They've just, just heard a, a disjointed, uh, corrupt version from those who have brought them to court. And, uh, you know, when they hear the truth, uh, they'll come on Jesus' side. Mm. Ah, isn't that amazing? That's, you know, a very uh, striking point that you've raised today, my sister. You know, to to, to think of it now, um, maybe you you and me right now, we can't go to the, to, the, to the court and knock at the doors of the courts to the judges and say, we've come to deliver a great controversy book or whatever. We said no chance for now, but there is a time. I, I, I like this actually, that God arranges you know you know things in his own way and in us in his own time that it is actually by that time the heatest time of the battle when actually even the places who were not able to reach out at certain times will be able now to speak the word to the highest people it's amazing it's, just, it's quite amazing to know uh yes i can see uh sis, is it sister Pia, oh no, brother, elder, elder Zimiri, and then Sister Charlene. Yes, in that order. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, my sister. Well, uh, like what you are saying, that it's it's very uh, important that we have a relationship with God. It's very very important when we have no relationship with God, the Holy Spirit cannot do anything. You remember Christ, he says that uh, you can say whatever you want to me, but the one who blasphemes the Holy Spirit committeth unpardonable sin. Why? Because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one who reminds us 
and he's the one who guided us. He's the one who teaches us. Remember Christ before he went to heaven. He says, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you and lead you into all truth. Therefore, if you do not have a relationship with Christ, the Holy Spirit cannot function in your life. But I want to come to what has been said in Matthew, which resonates with John chapter 16 from verses 1 going downwards, which says they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And Christ says, and these things will they do unto you. Why? Because they have not known the Father, nor on me. They have not known Christ. That's why they will take us before the courts. Take us and try to stop us from worshipping the true God. They shall mount all sorts of things and lies upon us. But one thing for sure, as you have said it before, when our relationship with God is good, we are not afraid. Remember the early Christians, as they were persecuted, they said they would not wave, they couldn't waver, but in happiness. They died for the word of God. As Haas was hanging on that cross, he was singing a song while, the, while, while they are burning him. Jesus, son of God, or Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. While fire is kindled, while he was being burnt, says he sung those words until his voice could not be heard. That kind of bravery cannot just come. One has to have a relationship with God for him to be able to go through that. As Christ was hanging on that cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. As Stephen was being stoned, with stones falling on his face, he says, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Those words cannot be uttered by a mere human being who has no relationship with God. When someone steps on your toe, you want to step on their toe as well. When someone says things that are not right to you, you want to retaliate. But when you have a relationship with God, you would not do anything, but you even pray for them. If there is a difficult prayer, is to pray for your enemy. And that is what God wants, that we can have a true reflection of Christ. Let this mind that was in Jesus Christ be also in you. Which mind? A mind which has got faith that is not unwavering a faith that remains solid. And when we are upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will find a place in us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. A very powerful points, Elder, that you have raised there. Um, shall we have our sister, Charlene? Good morning. Yeah, some of the things that uh, I was going to say that the elder was talking about, the martyrs also not um, feeding things that I, that I wanted to say as well, but I was reading their great controversy when I read this, read this piece, I thought of the martyrs, and that as the elder was saying, some people in the great controversy, some people just didn't feel anything. One man was beaten and the blood was coming out of his body, but he felt nothing. And we need not be afraid. And 
and some of the ladies and the children and and the people were dressed they had their best clothes on where they're going to be burnt at the stake i think i said burning at the stake they had their they put their best clothes on because they saw it as an honor to die for god and we know that we know that we need not be afraid because it's only for a short while a little bit of suffering and what is a little bit of suffering burning or whatever we have to go through for god and that's just encouraged me so much reading those stories in the great controversy because we can <clears throat> excuse me learn from those people how they were just willing to do everything for god and saw it as such a beautiful thing to suffer for christ nobody likes pain <laughs> but it's just a short while and if we have to die we open our eyes we see our lord so that that is this very special thing i think for us to be to to be able to do that thing for our for our lord and savior amen amen indeed um like you are saying oh yes uh, they is they were <clears throat> being you know persecuted and tortured to to their point of death actually they would do wear their best clothes and of course yeah uh, i also read in one of uh, the, the section that you are saying that even the the children we we even actually were saying quickly quickly it's me next to something you know it's no longer you speaking like elder said here when stephen was being stoned uh, the ways that he spoke are spoken by uh, somebody who is now, who is no longer himself. It's, it's God now taking over. The Holy Spirit took over. We pray that God will give us that level so that we can reach to that level where we will, we will not feel the insults. We will not hear the insults. Um, we will, we will not uh, be angry with uh, with the people, but actually sympathizing with them to feel sorry for them and to pray for them it will be a very trying time a very difficult and you know, time here and so the apostles faced a very challenging and trying time but they were no longer those ones the first ones who ran from the garden of gatesmen they were, they were totally totally transformed by the word and indeed, the Holy Spirit we, 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 is an evidence that is given to us now when we see the transformation, the total transformation that happened to the apostles before when they did not so much know how to, to, to acquaint themselves with Jesus. They ran and left him in the Garden of Gatesman. But later on, we see the whole world taken by storm by the same people who ran previously. Now they're totally transformed. So what does this mean to me, to you and to me now? It means it, it's possible, it's doable. The Holy Spirit can, can do the work through us only if we have a deeper relationship like Elder I said and Sister Charlin uh, with the very important, uh, powerful points. Uh, you know, um, I'm looking at... Um, this paragraph, that's uh, the, the statement here on the on the paragraph is I just comment it just to provoke our thoughts from others as well. Um, where it says, those who reject the truth will stand to accuse and oppress the disciples. You know, it's it's so painful to 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 read this uh, statement because you know the ones who reject the truth are not the people who will have never heard the word of God, no. But it's speaking about people who will have seemed to be accepting the truth. Does that kind of like even giving us an awakening, an, an, an eye-opener to say, as we are together in, in our churches, some people will reject that truth in the time when the, the persecution comes to its hottest point, that they will leave this truth that they have known, that they've campaigned for, that they've preached for, and all of a sudden they will turn against their brethren. This is the reason why we have to really pray for one another, even in our congregations. We have to pray for one another because you don't know whether it could be you who will turn against the other or the other turning against you. We will not know this. So this all, you know, 
time that we ought to spend in these prayers. Wow, wow I so love that the churches can really rise up in the morning. We would be so much filled in all the groups early in the morning, all the churches to fight together in prayers so that we will be able to, to stay into the accusations. Because when somebody is accusing you, like uh, somebody commented, you are bound to, you are tempted actually to retaliate so quickly. You are tempted also to give your word back. And, and, and that the devil rejoices. He likes that. He likes to see people, you know, exchanging blows and blasts. You'll be celebrating, celebrating with these demons and they will be clapping their hands and they will be cheering there. That's what the devil wants. But uh, it's 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 quite very you know you know important that we we ought to to work with the Holy Spirit, whereby it says there, but the Holy, the, but the Spirit of your Father, which is speaketh in you, as the Spirit of God illuminates the minds of His servants, the truth will be presented in its divine power and preciousness. That can only happen when. We are subdued by the Holy Spirit, soaked in there to saturate, to be saturated by the Holy Spirit. That throw whatever you want. I just cannot feel the, the pain to retaliate, but the love to pray for you. This is what we can pray for and we ought to pray for one another. Uh, let me check if there's anyone who wants to uh, comment in other hands. Um, I don't see um, any any hands. Um, oh yes, Sister Dorothy, go on. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Sister uh, Sister Metron, for for that, and thank you everyone for those uh, powerful comments. As it's been said, that we need to uh, to have a relationship with God, because if we do not study and prepare for these things that are about to happen to us we shall not be able to stand. We won't be able to, um, to endure. And God will only remind us through the Holy Spirit what we have learned. And I just love this promise and we should not be afraid. It says that God's grace will be dispensed to his servants to meet the emergency. It shall be given you says Jesus, in that same hour, what you shall speak. Isn't that wonderful? So we, did, we don't need to be afraid of, of persecution over the Sabbath. And then we have to learn about the Sabbath truth so well because these governors and these uh, kings who will be... Um, like interrogating us and all of that. They have never really, uh, most of them will not have known actually the truth. So the very testimony that we will give about the law of God is the very truth that some of them will accept and believe. Remember when Christ was on the cross, right? There were those who were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And we are told, after that, when after that, when Christ was uh, was crucified, and they saw that miracle about the darkness that hovered over the earth, and remember, surely they said, surely this was this this man was the son of God. So that miracle and the words that Christ spoke. Those who rejected the truth at the time because they did not, many did not understand what it meant. And we are told that many were converted later. They accepted the truth later on. So you see, death is a seed. Christ's blood on the cross was a seed that was planted and you and I we are those seeds that have been produced as the result of the suffering of Christ. So suffering is actually an honor to us to be chosen by God to suffer. Am I right? It's, it's actually an honor to suffer for Christ. So no one likes pain. 
But if we really have a close relationship with Christ, we shall find it an honor to die for Christ and be able to, to face the enemy, to face him to the face and let them do with us whatever they want to do because we, we know that we are to fear him who is able to destroy both the body and the soul. So we don't have to worry at all because some of us are shaking, are shaking scared of the Sunday law when it comes. Oh, what am I going to do if they come for me? I might be tempted to, 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 to recant. If we look at the story of the reformers, they were bold. It's not because they were, God gave it to them. They were dedicated. They were, they, they were knowledgeable. They knew the power of God and they gained confidence and boldness. You know, when we look at the saints who went before us, we should believe that God is all powerful and is under control and he will give us his grace just when we need it at the right time. So we have nothing to fear but to trust him, to trust Jesus, he will do it for us. Amen. Ah, amen, amen. You know, as you were saying, um, uh, to say some of us, we actually have this fear. You know, it's the enemy that he, you know, you know, you know just he, you know, throws that wave of fear as you are thinking, oh, the Sunday law is coming. What am I going to say if I'm going to be called out? What's going to happen? But I like your point, Sister Dorothy, really, to say it is an honor actually to suffer for Christ. Ah, you know, it just reminds reminds me, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm in my local church, I'm the leader of the Pathfinders. You know, we encourage children to work hard in, in their workbook. So that at the end they can achieve a certain honor, a certain honor when they've when they have worked hard, that honor. You work hard in order for you to receive an honor. You suffer for Christ in order for you to receive an honor. And then at the end of it, when we are, when, when we are celebrating, it will be really a joyous moment when we enter heaven. Each one is given an honor of how we suffered through, you know, the greatest times of trouble. We've gone through it and you are receiving an honor. I can imagine. You know, when we are marching and the softest, beautiful ever head music is playing, you know, nicely and you are receiving your honor, it will be just a moment of, of joyous. So when you think of all that, then this suffering, you will actually say, ah, go on, carry on, carry on, I'm waiting. I can't wait to see my savior. Like those people in the, uh, uh, those who have gone before us, they were actually, you know, happy when they were being, you know, thrown in the in the dance, giants of lions and mauled by lions, they were sacrificing. They said, no, we have seen better by faith, by the eye of faith, we have seen better. If we see it by the eye of faith, what will happen? I can't imagine uh, myself, I can't wait to be walking while I'm receiving an honor and I'll take a step as the song, as the music is played so nicely, so well. I'll take a step while the angels will say, who are these? Because they will be seeing the step that I'll be taking. The step that we'll be taking, Sister Dorothy, when we walk with the when we think about that, then the persecution must come. Yes, sister, um, the Tackley twins, I don't know who is behind there. Um, yes, I was just thinking that um uh, what, what was just said that um we'll be given we so we are given be given the strength that we do not have now. God will give us the strength when we need it. You know, the 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 words to speak were promised and the strength of faith that we do not have now, you know, and so we've got to just stay faithful to God because he'll, he'll furnish what we need when we need it. And it will be a powerful testimony and witness. Indeed, yes, it will be honestly powerful testimony. Yes, thank you so much. I see Elder Dimiri, yes. yes. Just, just the, yeah. the, from the the twins, you see, um, God is so good and is is faithful in what He says. When He says He will never leave us, and that is the, that is true, He will never. Despite the fact that we will go through difficult times and challenges, He will be with us. Uh, 
the sad part of it is that uh, the people who will persecute us are mostly likely to be our own, our very own brothers and sisters. Because Ellen White points out, you know, the prophetess, as she said, there is more to fear within than without. Why did she say that? When you look at how uh, Christ was persecuted, see, it says he came to the to his friend's house, but it was his friends that persecuted him. In other words, the 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 people who were supposed to be on the side of Christ are the ones who were persecuting the priests, the people who hold the articles of God were the ones persecuting the Son of God or persecuting Christ himself. So what does this tell us? It is always going to be the church that will turn against its very own. And it says, you see, as, 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 as this persecution goes on, some of our brothers and our sisters will even go and say, I know where Sister Metron lives. I know if she is not at that place, she is at that other one place, at that other place. So really, we need to pray for God to give us the spirit of discernment, but at the same time, to help us to stand firm that even if when we see our very own persecuting us, we will not be discouraged. You know, it's different when you have somebody from somewhere coming to slap you on the to slap you on the face. It's different when your own brother, when your own sister does that. What do I mean? We got brothers and sisters in our church. It's completely different when one of your faith. You were thinking that we believe in the same faith, but yet you are totally different. It's not going to be a walk in the park, but we have to endure to the end. And it is during our endurance that God give us, gives us the strength and the ability to remain standing on the on on the on the principles of truth or on that platform of truth that we will not waver but we will continue holding on thank you mm. thank you so much uh, elder you know as you are speaking about that this reminds me of the rwanda genocide terrible things that the enemy can do to people. And all of a sudden, you know, we all forget about uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse, verse 9 there, which tells us that uh, when that great dragon, Satan, was thrown out of heaven, he was wroth, he was angry. And then the verse goes on to tell us that he comes to to deceive the whole world. Oh, how we are so deceived by the enemy that we completely, totally forget whom we are dealing with, that the enemy that we are dealing with is not the one that we see. We can't see the enemy, but he hibernates in our loved ones. And then people all of a sudden will turn against one another. People, how we end up putting ourselves through this. And indeed, as you said, it's very important that we have to pray for one another in our churches because it's most painful to be 
you know, to be to be um to be persecuted or to be slapped or to be to be insulted by a fellow sister in the church, by a fellow brother in the church. It's very much painful than if it's somebody else who uh, who is not our faith, you can just say, uh, they just don't know the faith that I'm believing in. They don't know the Christ that I'm believing in. He, he, that one is much better. It's lighter, but not with one within. That's the most trying time. Thank you so much, Elder, for that. I see sister, is it sister Casey? Am I right? Yes, it's, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Matran, and uh, good morning, everyone on the platform. Yeah, when I think about persecution, I was trying to look for this statement which Sister Warich is putting. I don't know, I, I can't find it. I'll, I'll look for it and maybe put it on the chat later. Um, but he, God is, you know, the weakest of the weak, the weak, the weakest of of us all, you know, as long as we are willing, we will be filled with the Holy Spirit to go through. God is not looking for those uh, giant people who are outstanding in faith now. It's, it's those who are weak, who are who know that they are weak spiritually and they have to entirely depend on on God, that this uh, kind of um, persecution which we are going to face or this time of trouble which you are going to enter, it re requires a total submission, total dependence, total trust in God. And it's those who, who, can, who will not depend on themselves that they, they, know, they know how to go about it or they they have read so much, they have had intelligent knowledge about, about it and so forth. It's those who have completely given themselves to God. He will empower to go through all these things. So if I look at Peter, uh, you know, he was zealous for God and he, I will not, I will, you, you, I will not run away from you, Lord, Master, when you go to the cross. I will do this, but he did. He, he ran away. But if you look at his life later, he's even willing to be crucified upside down for the sake of Christ. To say, no, you can't put me in the same way as Christ. I'm not worthy. None of us are worthy. But it will be an honor if we, we, we completely depend on that we are weak. We we have nothing. We 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 have no. We have nothing in us. No knowledge in us. No nothing. No wisdom in us. But entirely depend on Christ. That's what we what we go through, Lord. Not I, but you. That's all I can say. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Kizia. Yeah, powerful points there. That uh, we will really need total dependence you know total submission on god and to depend on god in order for us to go through you know the the time of trouble to be empowered by him so without him the enemy will pull the rug under our feet and we'll find out that ah, ah oh, i thought we were standing thought i was strong you know sometimes we realize when you know, something happens and then the, the enemy all of a sudden pulls a rug under your feet. You realize, ah, ah, I thought I was very strong, but I am I have I've already retaliated. I've already said a, a, a word back to this person who annoyed me of, and have offended me. Yeah, the person was annoying, but I am I have already, yeah. We need to totally surrender. It's a lesson, you know, that I'm learning myself as well. That uh, I need to, to learn to, to totally surrender, you know, in God. You know, that uh, even when the insults come or accusations come or whatever, I don't feel them. But I just feel Christ. And that also to, you know, pray for others that they will not remember our 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 postcodes. 
during the trials, but they will remember the word of God rather than remembering that. No, Sister Dorothy stays at number so and so, street so and so. And we have to pray for one another on that one because the one, um, I think it was um, our North England Conference uh, president who preached a sermon that I'll never forget. In one of his uh, sermons, he said, the devil knows our postcode. I got like, what? You know, it was just like an awakening statement to me. Say, the devil knows where you live. He knows your postcode. And I'm thinking, why does he need to know my postcode? Why does he need to know where I live? Now it makes sense when we are now discussing here that he will be using now the people to make them remember where a fellow believer lives, a fellow believer's routine rather than remembering the words of God and to memorize the verses and the scriptures in the Bible, to stand and to defend the truth. And let's pray for, for one another and pray for ourselves that, Lord God, I don't want to remember anyone's postcode during the persecution time. I want to remember a word and stand and defend the truth. Very powerful, very powerful comments. Thank you so much. I have Sister, oh, I don't know, he's under prayer retreat, and then Sister Dorothy. And yeah, and I'm sure we'll come to the end of our program. I'll take those two comments. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's Sharon. I hope you can hear me. I mean, what I wanted to say is, and just to reiterate that, yes, it is a privilege to suffer for Christ when we think of the suffering that he um, experienced for us to gain heaven, then it is just a little in comparison to what he has done. And, and this is where spiritual fortitude comes in. If we are faithful in the little experiences that we have, he will make it possible for us to overcome the greater suffering that comes to us. I think there's, a, but there's quite a few um, quotes from the Ellen G. White's writing saying that for those who die in Christ, the revelation says that there is a blessing for those who die in Christ, that God, now think about it, God puts angels to guard the remains of his people. He even talks that he puts angels to guard the remains of William Miller because he was a faithful servant, even though he got confused and he was um he didn't stand up for what he believed in towards the end of the, you know, the the um the yeah towards the end of his um his life god saw just like faithful moses who was caused to stumble um by the people's actions that um he puts an angel to to guard the very ash so that not one grain is lost so when he calls people who have died in their faith will be resurrected not to see corruption, not to see death. So we need to also know that there is um, there is an honor in dying for Christ, and that um, the, you know, death will not have that sting anymore when Christ puts an end. But until then, that we must be faithful to know that He, who started the good work within us, will see it through completion. Um, and I think that it's a blessed hope that um, it is death before dishonor that we can we will prefer to die than to dishonor the code that Christ has placed within us, which is to honor Him in all that we do. And I think finally we need to remember people like Samson. He was placed in the house, the 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 hall of faith. Sorry, my <laughs> my alarm's going off. He was placed in the Hall of Faith despite the fact that he had um, failed to honor God in his um in in his whole being when he was placed in the circumstances where he could not see whether where he felt that the Holy Spirit was away from him. It was in that quiet time of suffering and being persecuted where his faith was renewed and he was prepared to die for what he believed in. And it was said that he killed more in his death than he did in whilst he was alive. 
So God's people, we need no longer be afraid of death because there are so many promises given to us when we die in the faith. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much for those powerful comments, my sisters. Yes, Sister Dorothy, that will be the last comment. Yeah, I'll try, it. I'll try to be quick. I could continue tomorrow, but because I wanted to comment on what you people have said, uh, to add to what people have said from spiritual prophecy, it's just amazing. Someone, Sister Casey, I think she said, talked about um, somewhere where we are, um, you know, the weakest shall be strengthened. It's amazing. I don't know whether what I I've, I've found is the same one, but it's, she says that in the book of Acts of the Apostles, she says, and the Holy Spirit is working, even the weakest by exercising faith in God, learned to improve their entrusted powers and to become sanctified, refined, and ennobled. As in humility, they submitted to the molding, influence of the Holy Spirit. They received of the fullness of the Godhead and were fashioned in the likeness of the divine. Isn't that beautiful? I am the weakest. Lord, please. I am the weakest. I want to be among, among these ones whom you will strengthen. And I'm sure some of you are saying, even me, Lord. <laughs> Wonderful. And then, um, and then she says, about what Sister Metron said, we need to be praying for one another. Listen to how the Holy Spirit, how beautifully he is working uh, with us this morning. She says in the same book, Acts of the Apostles, uh, 49 to 51, companies of Christian workers should gather to ask for special help, for heavenly wisdom, that they may know uh, how to plan and execute wisely especially should they pray that God will baptize his chosen ambassadors in mission, filled with a rich measure of his spirit, the presence of the spirit with God's workers, and workers will give the proclamation of truth a power that not all the honor or glory of the world could give. That's so wonderful. Perhaps we should include this in our morning prayers to pray for each other's ministries, whatever you're doing. Some of us, we pray together here, but we don't even know what each and every one of us uh, uh, does. We don't know because we are not a, like an open church where we can meet and, and discuss these things. But I think this is so powerful to pray for one another for wisdom that we may become wise, you know. The gospel makes us wise unto salvation. I just praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Everybody's contribution is just bless me. And thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Dorothy, and everyone for these powerful comments. Ah, yes, we can go on and on. But uh, time, time always is jealous, as they say. It's always fighting against us. But uh, we want to thank you so we shall end here today, and then we can uh, carry on from tomorrow, God willing. Uh, if I may request, El, is it the elder or brother? I don't know. Behind, it's H, so I don't know H, whether it's H for a female or a male, Wilson. Please, to give us a closing prayer. Okay, maybe they are not in a good uh, place to give us a closing prayer. Shall I request Sister Ronika, please, to give us a closing prayer? Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Our Father, watch in heaven. We come to you this morning, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to sit at the feet of your of the cross to listen to your word and discuss everything that has been done. We thank you, Lord, for you have been with us throughout the this discussion that you were doing. You know, Lord, that you are, you are our creator. You've created us and you know everything. 
that is uh, within us. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you were with us throughout the night and we are in the land of the living now. And we will continue, Lord, to thank you and bless you in everything that you do for us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you be with everyone and uh, who has been on the platform, Lord. We pray that you meet them at their, t at their their time of need in everything that they do lord you know them you know their needs lord and it's up to you lord to bless us and give us everything that we need in everyday life that we do we pray lord that um as we continue you no know, reading the desire of ages we want to be people who are able to go in the vineyard and to spread your word. And we know, Lord, sometimes there are a lot of challenges that we meet. But as it has been said, the Holy Spirit will be with us and we can continue to be there and we can continue to work hard in your vineyard. And we pray that we have that relationship with you, Lord, so that we will be strong in our faith and you'll be able to spread the word, Lord. We know there are a lot of people who are there who don't like us to continue to do your work. But because you be on your side, Lord, you be with us in everything that we do, Lord. We will not have fear even if we are persecuted because you are our Father. You have done this. You have gone through this persecution. But at the end of it, you, you fought the good fight and you are on our side as well. Be with us, Lord, as we are going to depart from the platform. We ask that the Holy Spirit continues to be with us, not to leave, not to be away from your presence, but to continue to be with you throughout the day. We pray that you be with us as we will be doing different tasks today and for us Lord to continue to reflect on what we have been discussing and also to try by all means Lord not to be just hearers but to be doers of what we have heard every day help us Lord to pray for each other and to strengthen each other in everything that we do and I pray that you continue to be with us. You never leave us. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus who died for us on the cross. And his blood washed all our, our sins. May you continue to be with us in everything that we do, Lord. And all this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Amen. Sister Ronika, for that uh, powerful closing prayer. Once again, I just want to say thank you, everyone, from the prayer team and uh, up to this uh, time. I'm sorry we have just gone over the, the, the time. Um, I apologize to everyone. I hand over to the Tatley twins to dismiss us, please. Thank you, Sister Metron, for that. doing the, the powerful paragraphs. There's a lot in there, and I'm sure we can glean more out of them. Um, at uh, 12 o'clock it will be midday prayer. We're still waiting for confirmation from the speaker because he's travelling. But if not, if, if he's not able to do it, then we should continue our book, uh, Last Day Events, and uh, look at continue to look at that. That's a standing book when we don't, when the speaker's not able to do it. You know, so, um, and we get blessed by doing that as well. Um, then it, it will be 6.30 song service. Now we're not, we haven't heard who the speaker is for this week, but as soon as we know, then we'll, we'll um, do a poster for that as well. So it's a join and I'd be surprised who's doing what. <laughs> um, have a nice day, everyone, and, and see you all later by God's grace. Thank you. Thank you, amen. Bye. Amen. Bye-bye.